Movie theaters have been a staple of American life for over a century. From the Nickelodeon picture houses of the early 1900s, the silent film era, the early talkies, oh, shall I serve it in a pail? through Hollywood's golden age, all the way to the modern blockbuster. Audiences have gone to the cinema to feel delighted, shocked, <laughs> and a sense of wonderment. But since the invention of the television, home entertainment has threatened the viability of the theatrical experience. A threat theaters have fended off through sophistication, technology, and spectacle. But though box office revenues have continued to rise, movie theater attendance peaked over 20 years ago, and since has been falling steadily with improvements in home entertainment technology like better video and audio LED, quality, LED, QLED, OLED, and most of all, the advent of streaming. Then came the pandemic, forcing most theater circuits to close for over a year and accelerating the rise in direct-to-consumer video. In 2020, Netflix added a record 37 million new subscribers. Today, theaters have reopened, but lingering COVID fears and endless amounts of accessible at-home content have placed the theatrical film industry on what appears to be a path to starvation. Letter. Things could get much, much worse. Some experts say the behavioral pivot to streaming will mean the end of movie theaters in the not-so-distant future. But are theaters really dying? And if so, why should we care? Is film art meant to be exhibited in a theater, like paintings in a museum? Or simply an entertainment product engineered to earn money? And movie theaters like silent films and VHS tapes are just another casualty of its industry's natural selection. Before the pandemic, there were basically three ways of releasing movies. One was a theatrical release. For it to be a quote-unquote real theatrical release in play nationwide, you need the participation of the three largest theater chains, AMC, Cinemark, and Regal. The second way was to go day and date. So IFC and Magnolia were pioneers in this model to have very small theatrical releases alongside a transactional VOD release. And then, of course, there were just streaming original films, um, you know, Netflix originals. The length of time a film is shown exclusively in theaters is called the theatrical window, and it's the cornerstone of the film exhibition business. Until 2010, the window was fixed at 16 weeks. Then Disney released Alice in Wonderland to home video 12 weeks after its opening. Release windows have been a point of contention between studios and theaters ever since. The line in the sand that you could not cross was it had to be exclusive to theaters for a 74 day window. I remember there was a lot of drama when Sony put the first Venom film to buy digitally over Christmas. And that was only a 67 day window and they freaked out. That's just how different things were just, just a couple of years ago. The window certainly shortened. Some universal titles, for instance, based on box office, go 17 days. This is another challenge of, uh, I think through the pandemic, with all these streamers, you kind of train the audience to know to wait. In 2020, AMC struck a deal with Universal Pictures to play its releases for at least 17 days before sending them to home video, shrinking the already narrowing window from almost three months to three weekends. Cinemark publicly admonished the deal made by AMC while Regal Cinemas vowed to only show movies that respected the traditional theatrical window. What's going on with the large exhibition chains is something that I'm watching with interest. I don't know what business could be closed or as severely impacted as, as the exhibition business was for as long as it was and not, you know, have some kind of uh, crisis period. So, you know, Regal is in a process of reorganization right now. In September 2022, Cineworld, parent company to Regal Cinemas, filed for bankruptcy, forcing Regal to close 39 theaters a few months later. Quickly, it's set to close next month. In the summer of 2021, about a year into the pandemic, LA's Arclight and Pacific theaters closed for good, including the longtime Hollywood monument, the Cinerama Dome. And five other Southern California locations that closed more than a year ago will not reopen. That's right. KKL9's but while some doors have closed, others have opened. 